Aegon Targaryen is one of the more controversial characters in House of the Dragon. He's a drunk, a sadist, and an abuser, but a prince that many believe was destined for greatness. Aegon Targaryen is a prime example of the weight of expectations, what comes from expecting too much and expecting nothing at all. As always, spoilers this beware, and let's get into the video. Who is Aegon II? Aegon II is the firstborn son of King Viserys and Queen Alicent, and though he is his first son, he's only the king's second child. Aegon was named for Aegon the Conqueror, the very first Targaryen king who was famous for uniting the realm. Interestingly enough, Aegon is not the second Aegon. Aegon I had two sons, Aenys and Maegor. Aenys had a son himself who was also named Aegon. So technically, Aegon II is actually Aegon III. There's a reason why he's not called that, but that's a topic for another video. Anyway, an interesting piece of information that no one asked for. At the start of the story, Aegon is an adorable baby, then a pervy 13-year-old, and later on a drunk who delights in the shortcomings of others. For years, it's been pushed onto Aegon what and who he should be. The perfect prince, a great king, and the conqueror come again. But he's far from any of those things. So how exactly does this turn into this? It's easy to see Aegon as just a monster with what was shown in the story. Aegon comes across as this slacking sleazeball who doesn't care about how his actions affect people. And that's a fair assessment given what we see, but there's more to him than meets the eye. Ever since childhood, Aegon has had no say in who he is or who he wants to be. Before he can even walk or form a sentence, people are already plotting on his future. His grandfather and great-uncle are all scheming to get him on the throne. Many other lords and some of the common folk despair that he will be king for no other reason than that he was born a boy. The only one who's resistant to this is Alicent, his mother. Until she isn't. This one thing sets the stage for why he turned out so awful. Aegon has had the weight of the world on his shoulders since birth, and it's easy to see him as nothing more than a spoiled sociopath. But this one line says otherwise. This daughter. Do you love me? This one sentence the genuine curiosity in his voice. Aegon is about to be made king, the most powerful man in Westeros. This is the biggest day of his life, and yet the only thing he seems to care about is knowing if his mother loves him. Alicent calls him an imbecile for asking, but is he really? Almost every time we see Alicent with Aegon, there never once seems to be a moment of tenderness between the two of them like she has with Aemon or Helena. We never see her hold him, never see her try to console him or try to understand him, Almost every time they're together, she's yelling at him and slapping him for things that may or may not be his fault. Aegon has had no love from his mother, has been given nothing from her, and yet she expects everything from him, always pointing out where he's going wrong, always saying he needs to be better and needs to do more. And in many cases, things like this would turn a person into an overachiever, trying to perfect everything, accomplish as much as possible so no one else can complain. But people don't seem to talk about the flip side of this. How the things that make you can also break you. When you expect too much from your child, they may expect too much from themselves as well. Aegon is the king's son, his first son, and as such, he's often seen as the golden boy, or rather, golden dragon. But everyone seems to have no problem finding the faintest smudge on his scales. No matter how hard he polishes, he'll never be clean enough. No matter how much he shines, he'll never be bright enough. And that kind of weight on a child from such a young age it's no wonder the cracks start forming. Every day is a new question, a new problem he has to find a way to solve, but there's never an answer. I did not ask for this. I've done everything you've asked me to, and I try so, I try so hard, but it will never be enough for you or father. It's easy to overlook this scene given what Aegon does to Diana. It comes off as a whiny, spoiled brat begging for attention, and to a degree that is right. But this is a cry for help if I've ever seen one. And no, I'm not trying to justify what he did. It was awful and inexcusable, but with the way his voice breaks when he tries to talk to Allison, it makes his pain all the clearer. Allison tells Aegon, You are no son of mine. And yet, I can't help but find that ironic. Because Aegon is her son, not just by blood, but by circumstance. The stories almost mimic each other exactly. Aegon never wanted to be king. Alicent never wanted to be queen. Aegon didn't want to marry Helena. Alicent didn't want to marry Viserys. Yet both were pushed into things they didn't want or need by their unyielding and non-sympathizing parent. All for the sake of family. 
Allison complains in the past that after becoming queen, no one saw her as Lady Allison anymore. It's funny how when it comes to Aegon, she only sees the king-to-be and not her own child. Aegon is Allison, his mother rewritten, and it's a similar case to Tyrion and Tywin. Tywin despises Tyrion and refuses to acknowledge his accomplishments and achievements. He too says, you are no son of mine. But Tyrion is Tywin. They may look different, but the way they act, the way they think, the things they do are almost identical. I am your son. I have always been your son. Sometimes people are a reflection of ourselves. We don't like the things they do, but then we turn around and do them ourselves. So in a strange way, when Alicent is angry with Aegon, she is also angry with herself. Like I said before, their situations are almost identical, but the one thing that sets them apart is their gender. Alicent was born a woman, Aegon was born a man. Naturally, one is less restricted than the other. It's why someone like Aegon can leave the castle, get drunk, sleep with random women, and sire bastards. It's easy to see Allison as this pious woman trying to do the right thing, but what if she had been born a man? What if she didn't have the same restrictions she does have now? Who's to say she wouldn't be exactly the same as him, venting out her frustrations through wine and women? Aegon is miserable and no one seems to care, like Allison was when she married Viserys. Everyone sees a prince, a king, but not a boy who's never had any love. It's no wonder he has such cruel and self-destructive tendencies. He's been climbing the mountain for so long, he's gotten tired. Wondering that if he can't ever reach the top, why not just go back down to the bottom? And of course, Allison isn't the only problem. There's also Viserys. Viserys is often recognized as a good man, but he's made many mistakes that we'll discuss in his video. But for now, let's talk about how he fails with Aegon. The only time we see him dote on or care for Aegon was when he was a baby who could do no wrong. But every instance after that, he only ever appears to chastise him. When he gets angry in the courtyard, and when Aemon says he's the one who said the strong boys were bastards. Aegon even says it himself. Because he didn't like me. Which I'm sure isn't true, but it speaks volumes about their relationship. Viserys never seemed to take any true interest in his other children besides Rhaenyra. He names her heir. He supports her children. He protects her when she's in danger, but not his own son when he loses an eye. He gets angry at Aegon for calling Rhaenyra's children bastards, but not Rhaenyra for producing them and putting her family at risk. Aegon is his first living son, and yet he always seems to come in second. I do feel sympathy for him, for the child he used to be. Despite his actions, Aegon just wants to be loved and accepted, but there always seems to be some condition to it. He has to be king, he has to marry his sister, he has to be what's best for everyone else and not what's best for himself. When a person spends all their time catering to others, when will there ever be room for themselves? If we look past his faults for a moment, what Aegon goes through is such a relatable thing. Children want to be loved. They want to be happy. To make their family proud, who hasn't known the pain of a disappointed parent? Or perhaps even worse, a parent who doesn't seem to care at all. He spends most of his time wanting for something he may never have. It's why he resorts to drinking, to women, they're easy, he doesn't need to prove himself to them, they don't expect anything from him, except maybe a bit of money. He doesn't need their love, so he doesn't feel pained when he fails to get it. It's all filthy and grimy, but it's better than being perfect, it's better than being decent. He's probably been all these things, and yet it's gotten him nowhere. Like I said before, he tried to climb the mountain, but he could never reach the summit, and he's fallen so far that he's lost himself. Kinghood has always been forced down his throat, and he's been made to believe that it's his achievements that matter, not him. The crown matters, not his feelings. Just like his mother, who had the title of queen, forced under her despite her own desires. And I just can't help but find it funny how the cycle just repeats itself. She calls Otto out for his manipulation, and then manipulates her son. This would be the right time to break the wheel, but she turns it all over again. Putting her son through the same pain she felt, and then wondering why he spreads that to others. Like Otto, she doesn't understand her own child. Allison complains about how Otto toyed with her life, and then he responds, If that is true, then I made you queen of the seven kingdoms. Would you have desired it otherwise? Basically saying that she should be grateful, assuming the ends justify the means. The power makes it better. She ridicules him for suggesting that, and then does the same to Aegon. Have the decency to look grateful. 
Do you know what's been done to give you this day? Disregarding his emotions and feelings for the sake of power that's being forced onto him. Of course, Allison doesn't believe what she's doing is wrong. She assumes that this is what Viserys wanted, and it just so happens to be what her family wanted for years. But the wants of a parent should never exceed the needs of a child. Aegon has been suffering for years, and yet no one has seemed to care or notice. No one tries to speak to him. No one tries to understand. All they ever do is yell and hit him and expect him to learn without ever being taught. Pressure doesn't always make diamonds. It's no wonder he delights in the pain of others because pain is what he knows. Pain is all he's ever been given. And now he's a reflection of it all. And yet still people act as if it's just his nature to be cruel. Perhaps it is, but as I said, that's just how he was nurtured. Or shall I say, how he wasn't. It makes all the more sense why he finally looks happy when the crown is placed on his head in episode 9. It's not simply because he's a king now, but when the people cheer for him, he finally seems to have what he's always wanted. Love. In this time, it's unconditional. No strings attached. The people seem to love him for just being him. Something his mother and father never did. Not even his sister Rhaenyra. We don't see much of his relationship with Rhaenyra, but from what I can see, it seems like it's non-existent. We never see her interact with her other siblings. Even when Aegon is a baby, she just ignores him and looks at him as if he's competition. Of course, it's deeper than that. I wouldn't be surprised if Rhaenyra hated Aegon to a degree because, in her eyes, he's what killed her mother. Maybe not literally, but it was Viserys' constant pursuit of a son that ultimately killed Emma and left her motherless. He's the personification of her hurt, the betrayal she felt from her father and best friend. So she distances herself. And after the time skip, it doesn't even seem like she considers Aegon or any of their siblings as family. She says as much during the small council meeting. I have felt the strife between our families of late, my queen. Our families. Not family. Before the war even starts, Rhaenyra has drawn a separation between them all. Which is sad because maybe if she had connected with Alicent's children, her siblings, with Aegon, given him the love he lacked instead of making him feel unwanted, he may have turned out to be a better person. They even sided with her in public and claimed that the throne was hers. But we'll go over her faults in her video. Aegon, while not a good man, was a child like the rest of us at some point. He didn't suddenly grow devil horns and decide to commit atrocities, although some people do. His family tried to build him up, and all they did was tear him apart. Now all that's left is the monster of their creation and the power they handed him.